I won't stop till I hear him say Okay, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyperX video breakdown. Very interesting video for you all today. We're going to be discussing the global financial crisis that we are on the brink of experiencing. Not only the global financial crisis, but also the major shift in financial power alongside this digital transformation that we are all literally living through as we speak. If you enjoy deep rabbit hole dives like this, actually giving you guys value in the form of information, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. We do appreciate the love and support. We'll add this video to our financial crisis playlist on the CyberX YouTube channel. Make sure that you go check that video out and you stay up to date with what is going on. So in today's video, I have a series of video clips for you all. Then I will be pausing the video clips and talking in between them informing you guys on what is going on and also giving you guys some more in-depth perspectives via some of my favorite interviewees on the YouTube space. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy a couple of these video clips. And again, we ask that you do us a favor. If you like these video breakdowns, take it upon yourself to copy the link of them, share them across your social media platforms, share them with a friend or family member, make sure that you're subscribed. And without further ado, let's get started. So right now in the financial world, we are going through two major shifts, two major transitions. One is the digital transformation, and the second one is the major shift in the global reserve currency status. Now, the global reserve currency status, if you're not too familiar with that, refers to the dominant currency that is held by central banks and other financial institutions as a store of value for international transactions. And currently, the US dollar holds this status. However, there are several potential systematic shocks that could potentially cause a shift in the global reserve currency status, which leads me over here. Breaking down, this is actually part two to a previous video breakdown, this tweet in detail where I said the elite bankers, aka the biggest crime syndicate in the world, are planning the next false flag event, mark my words. And I firmly believe that it will make every other false flag event these elites have created look like child's play. This is the only way to get us to transition peacefully to a fully controlled CBDC system between now and 2027. This tweet will age well. Just watch. So that is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about this global reserve currency status shift happening and taking place alongside this digital transformation. It's interesting how they're both happening at the same time. Now, some things, aside from black swan events that nobody can predict that could potentially happen, is an economic decline. If the United States experiences a significant economic decline, which we are currently on the brink of experiencing and seeing, which we'll get into later in this video, such as a severe recession or depression, it could weaken the U.S. dollar status as the global reserve currency. We could also see potential political instability not only political instability, but we could also see technological disruption, which we are currently in the process of seeing, which is the United States falling behind in this digital transformation due to lack of regulation. Now, last but not least, we could also see geopolitical shifts. For example, if there is a major shift in global power dynamics, which we are on the brink of seeing right now with the BRICS nations, China and Russia, and uh, this Ukraine war that's going on right now, you guys have seen the conflicts in the news. A rise of a new superpower or the decline of the U.S. as a dominant player on the world stage, which we are currently seeing right now, could lead to a shift in the global reserve currency status as well. So put all those things together. Like I have said, I have some video clips for you all. So just check out these video clips supporting my thesis and what it is that I'm specifically talking to you guys about, just to show you all that. If you all take it upon yourself to do your research, there are individuals, aside from us here at CyberX, that are, are attempting to wake people up to what's really going on, things that aren't going to be talked about amongst the mainstream media. Um, I'm going to cover some more questions here. Um, it's Friday, by the way, and I'm thankful for that. And anyway, um, is the black swan, you know, look, I don't think we've seen the black swan, a black, I think, I really believe. We're going to see a black swan event occur or some false flag. Obviously, this is engineered. All right, it's being, it's being set up right now that is going to be so big. It's going to take everything before it and make it look like child's play. They need to do this. Look, they, they want a world of war. 
They want another world war, the military industrial complex, the, the, the corporate agenda. This is how it would be fulfilled. And they also want to, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. They want to reduce the population of the world by a large amount. Okay. What better way to do this? Okay. This is what they're going to do. Um, so just look out for it. It's very sad to me to, to think that there is a very high probability that thousands, thousands of people are going to lose their lives due to some government run uh, false flag. And that's really the truth. But, but national currencies steal part of your future lifetime. This is my big point is it, yeah. it's, it's a tool for enslavement. It's a tool for enslavement. Just to have them around requires your future work hours to uh, pay on the assets that were acquired to create these IOUs. To that point, I want to bring up a, a section in your book, There's No Place Like Home, where you say, in the U.S., before the creation of our central bank, an average home cost a few thousand dollars. Uh, you, you, you question, did the home go up or did the currency go down? But here's the, the part I really enjoyed. Before the Fed, the U.S. dollar was worth one twentieth of an ounce of gold. Now, I can't tell you what the exact price of gold is as I'm writing this, but if you take the current price of an ounce of gold and put one in front of it, you will have the fraction of an ounce of gold that the dollar is worth as you are reading this. Yes, you say, the U.S. dollar is only worth one, insert the current price of gold, of an ounce of gold. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the free market exchange rate. That is what they've done to the dollar. They've stolen more than 97% uh, of the purchasing power of the dollar. That is what they've done to the dollar. They've stolen more than 97% uh, of the purchasing power of the dollar. And we are about to see gold make up. The, I mean, it's it's lagging right now as far as it accounting for the expansion of the currency supply and that is about to change uh, i think over the next uh, three years or so you're going to see some dramatic shifts uh, i think over the next uh, three years or so you're going to see some dramatic shifts and uh and the repeal of glass steagall and uh alan greenspan lowering the rates and and not seeing the bubble that he was creating that's that all caused the global financial crisis well look at what we're doing this time we've never raised rates at this type of pace before and the currency that has just been created just before we started raising rates is astronomical and then you look at you know the the national debt rolls over every five years roughly it's a little bit longer than five years now but if you take the average duration of all the different bills bills notes and bonds and uh, and it's thirty one trillion dollars worth of debt. It's thirty one trillion dollars worth of debt that we're rolling over, and we have to do basically a mortgage refinancing, you know, a refi on the entire uh, United States of America. I'll go ahead and I'll pause right there. Now he mentioned the two thousand eight financial crisis. If you're not too familiar, that was a crisis, major global economic downturn that began in the United States and quickly spread to the rest of the world. In the years leading up to the financial crisis, many U.S. banks had been offering mortgages to borrowers with poor credit histories in a practice specifically known as subprime lending. These loans were then bundled together and sold to investors in the form of mortgage-backed securities. However, as housing prices began to fall and borrowers began to default on their loans, the value of these securities plummeted, leading to huge losses for investors and financial institutions. Now, at the time of the crisis, the chairman of the Federal Reserve was Ben Bernanke, who had been appointed to the position by President George W. Bush in 2006. Overall, the 2008 financial crisis was a major shock to the global economy with widespread and long-lasting impacts on financial markets. And in my personal opinion, the next financial crisis that we are on the brink of experiencing right now is going to be 10 times worse. For example, We've seen major headlines like this come out recently, like the U.S. default on debt likely in summer or fall if Congress doesn't act. Now, what could potentially happen if the United States were to default on its debt? Well, it could potentially have a significant and negative consequence for the economy, banks, and citizens here in the United States and on the global spectrum of things. 
some of the potential scenarios that could play out off the top of my head are an economic recession, stock market turmoil, bank failures, reduced government services, and also international ramifications. Now, this is the most important one because I mentioned to you all at the beginning of this video, there is a systematic shock that needs to happen, in my personal opinion, for the global reserve currency status to shift hands and for this CBDC system to roll out. So overall, a default on the U.S. debt would definitely be catastrophic and have far-reaching consequences on not only the economy, but also banks and citizens. With that being said, this new CBDC system, I want to take a second and talk to you about this. I have four more video clips for you all where we're going to get into the CBDC discussion and the potential crisis happening. But towards the end of the video clips that I have, I have a panel discussion. And on this panel discussion, one of the panelists is Nellie Lang. Now, she is the United States undersecretary of the treasury of domestic finance, right? And I want you to pay attention to what she says about the future value of crypto payments. We'll get into that in just one second. Before we hop into these video clips, you need to understand that blockchain and distributed ledger technology have the potential to enhance the current financial system in a number of ways. They could potentially provide greater security, transparency, speed, and accessibility, while also reducing costs and improving efficiency. With that being said, not only does distributed ledger technology and blockchain technology have the potential to improve and enhance the current financial system, but it also has the potential to improve the global debt crisis by providing greater transparency, better risk management, reducing fraud, and improved access to credit. With that being said, there are still many challenges and obstacles to overcome before these technologies can achieve widespread adoption, but we are in the process and on the brink of that all taking place. That will most likely happen in our lifetimes. I'm a firm believer that within the next, let's just say, two to three to maybe five years max, this digital transformation will 110% happen and take place. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy these last two video breakdowns. But this is just one of the... Uh you know, the pillars of civilization that are being washed away right from under us. And, and since money is the lifeblood of any civilization, uh, it represents the fruit of your past work, which is congealed in your savings and everything that you want to buy and sell and provide for others, it's all done through currencies. And when these people that run these central banks have control, total control of the currencies, which will be the case when these CBCDCs go into effect. Uh, you don't own your life anymore. You don't own your life anymore. Of course, most people already don't because they're, they're, they're wage slaves. They're deeply in debt. Uh, they, all, they already have to, most people already have to do and say and think exactly what they're told because otherwise they won't be able to pay their mortgage, they won't be able to pay their credit card debt, they won't be able to pay their student loan debt. So it's already pretty much game over for personal freedoms that we grew up learning to love and cherish. Um, but would you not agree, Doug, that it just feels different this time of, around? It does, we're heading into a major crisis. Look, for years I've said that we're entering upon a phenomenon that I call the Greater Depression, because it's gonna be uh, much worse, much longer lasting, and much more, uh, much different than the unpleasantness of 1929 to 1946. But that may still be an important part of the picture, but we shouldn't, especially in this panel, that we should not, um, you know, forget that this is a technology that has the potential to change market structure. It has the potential to bring greater interoperability and competition to sectors of the economy that honestly haven't seen uh, more competition in decades. We should not, um, you know, forget that this is a technology that has the potential to change market structure. It has the potential to bring greater interoperability and competition. But since we think the future value of crypto is for payments and not for speculative trading, but since we think the future value of crypto is for payments and not for speculative trading, the natural connection I'm going to make today is the big tech is through payments. The future of cryptocurrency is for payments, not for speculative trading. Boom. That is massive coming from Nelly Lang, 
who is the Secretary of Treasury for Domestic Finance. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all enjoyed this video breakdown. Smash that thumbs up button if you did. Attempting to wake individuals up, giving you guys a little bit more of an in-depth perspective on what's going on behind the scenes. Things that the mainstream media aren't going to necessarily talk about and discuss. If you all didn't enjoy, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe. We do appreciate the love and the support. Do your own personal research. I'm not telling you to go out and buy cryptocurrency assets. Always be awake and aware out there. Many blessings, and I'll see you guys in the next video breakdown. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh, da, 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 da.